Good morning, church. Oh, it is so good to have an opportunity to welcome you to Trinity, um, where no matter what your name is or where you came from or what your spiritual journey looked like um, before now, um, no matter what uh, you feel like's going on in your life, you are welcome here. And we're grateful to have you either in the pews um, or online with us through the live stream. So my friends, thank you for taking the time to come and be part of the body of Christ, uh, known as uh, Trinity United Methodist Church. Our theme today is going to be knowing God. Hmm, God is a really big thing. Uh, we'll see what we can find out about knowing God. Um, we'll do some praying, we'll hear music, we'll sing songs. And it will happen because the body works together to make it happen. So I'm grateful to Logan up in the booth, um, getting that live stream out there, and for Camille um, being at the piano today, and for all the folks who will come up and share in worship today through their gift of um, reading or lighting candles um, or uh, holding things and serving. So praises be to God for um, all that um, the body does together. And so, my friends, I think that my first um, place of apology um, is that we're going to welcome the light of Christ. And yes, I do have the correct number. Um, it's later on. I'm going to have to give you a different hymn number. Um, but we're good for this one. And so I would invite you to stand in body or spirit as we sing Made From One Blood. This is a new um, hymn to us, um, but it has a very old tune um, that I hope you will find familiar so that it's easy for you to sing. be seated as we prepare for our call to worship. 
Joseph, thank you so much for coming to help with the call today. Remember, folks, call and response. Um, Joseph's going to lead, and um, I'll go along with you as the congregation. Right, right, right. So pretty close. It's already on, but pretty close. There we go. Come to worship, people of God, with praises on your lips. We glorify the one who holds our hands when we slip. Come to the presence of the one who calls us into his sacred place. Sacred space. Where the doors of grace are thrown open so all may enter. Come and hear the stories of the one who loves you. We will tell the joy and of the love, of the peace, and of the hope which is ours. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Gene, are you going to come and gather some prayers for us today? Fabulous. I'm tired of winter, so I'm jumping out with spring. I think that's an excellent plan. I think spring is gone, though. I think we actually entered into summer. I think we skipped all of spring, but <laughs> we are still going to be cheerful today and flowery. It's beautiful out. So does anyone have any prayers or concerns they would like to share with us today? Don. So the prayers for the chemo treatments, number five, is they're going through a tough time, hard on all of us. Lots of prayers, I know, going your way. Lots of concerns, anything we can do, we want to help you. So please be bring, bringing up Don and, and Sherry in your prayers. Yes. lost her, her brother-in-law with colon cancer, another nasty thing. I think all of us have been affected with cancer throughout the ages. I don't think anybody has been left untouched by that terrible, terrible affliction. Ruth Ann, can you bring us a, a first name for him? Lynn. Lynn, thank you. Lynn Anderson. That's but. What, but. That's very nice because we all know that, that the cancer sometimes lingers on for years and to only have a, a, a week or so of, of not feeling good is, is a blessing. As much as a blessing that this could be in this situation, it's still nice that uh, he had a, a quiet passing and an easy time compared to what could have been. So praise to God for that, for, for making, making it easier, I think, probably on everybody if it's only been a short time, yeah. something that they didn't have to deal with. And so... So, yeah. wants to spend time with family at the at the end like that, and so it was, it was it's a great blessing that he was able to do that and uh, to spend time, and and. So in tragedy, there's a little bit of light, there's a little bit of hope, silver lining in every cloud, and so, you know, that's something really nice to happen in a, in a terrible situation. So prayers for Ruth Ann and her family as they mourn this loss, but a little joy in our hearts that there was not a lot of suffering and not a lot of pain that they went through. Yes.
Travel prayers for Judy as she goes to help her sister having surgery and taking care of her. And that they have a great visit and a good safe trip and come back to all of us and into this family that we love and, and care for. My concerns are there's a lot of stuff going on here at Trinity and in the, in the world as a whole. Um, a lot of times it's going to bring people down. A lot of depression is out there. A lot of people are struggling with their feelings. Uh, you don't know what's going on. Um, you know, as the saying goes, grant us the wisdom to change the things we can and accept the things we can't. And so I, I pray that all of you in this time of trouble will understand that there's some things we cannot change and accept that and move on. It's going to be a, a fun time. It's going to be a great time. There's so much to give, be thankful for, but it's going to be a tough. It's going to be hard. But we'll all be here as a family. We'll all be here together. And so we have each other, and that's what's important. Yes, Tyler. So, yes, that's a very important thing. There's, everyone has a biological mom, or most everyone has a biological mom, but there's so many moms that have stepped up um, through the ages at different points in your life that you needed someone. Um, I heard something the other day from my daughter's fiancé who said, Bailey's not really a stepmom, but she is the mom who stepped up. Mm, that's nice. That's nice. So... <laughs> Anyway, yes. Ruth. So um, David safely arrived in Dallas, Oregon. Um, he has moved into um, the parsonage there, uh, although he's sleeping on a little twin bed air mattress. Because <laughs> uh, he just took a couple of things, just a, a few things with him, whatever he could fit in the car. Um, but he is um, making his way and seemed um, like he's eaten an awful lot of good food and drank a lot of good cider um, while he's there so far. Um, but prayers uh, for David as he starts his new job tomorrow morning. All right. Yeah. Prayers for David, who's now in Dallas. Uh, like Ruth said, I went on Facebook, and he seems to be eating very, very well. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so Ruth may be getting uh, the short end of the stick, but maybe he's just scouting out new restaurants. He is, he is. That, that, he assured me of that. It, was, it was all he just wanted to be prepared in, in for my you. best interest but for when I get there. You know, another chapter in David's life, it's, it sounds exciting, and he starts his new job tomorrow. He's been s traveling safely. Everything's going well, so we continue to hold him in our prayers as he uh, starts a new chapter in, in, in David's life, and so that'll be exciting. Dallas, Oregon just throws me off every time because... Dallas is not Oregon. That every time people say he's in Dallas, I'm completely in a different right. part so, of it. So what's going to make that easier is that um, actually the town where the parsonage is is in Monmouth, Oregon. And so that will be so a, that a will place <laughs> that doesn't uh, bring up, bring you up. know, uh, pictures of someplace else. Yes. So anyone else have anything? Yes. So for Doug and Loris, celebrating their, their 75th birthday and uh, another change in life, moving into assisted living. Um, I know it's not easy sometimes. It's pretty hard. Um, at this stage in life, a lot of these steps are, are final steps. You know, moving into assisted living, you don't get better and come out of. Um, losing the ability to drive, you know. But prayers for them and lots of support and love and realize that this is just another chapter, another opportunities um, in that part of your life and then hopefully with the assisted living being around more people and have more friends to make more friends and, and have a, a good time and make the most of this situation 
Yes. Um, I got to go and see Albert Havlin, uh, thinking about assisted living. Um, I got to see Albert this week. Um, he sends you all his love. Um, I told him that we lift him in prayers um, many of the weeks, and he says, by golly, I pray for the church too. So um, continue, please, to keep Albert in your prayers. Yeah, Albert is going through rough times. He has good days and bad days, like all of us. And he had a really good day when I was there the other day. So he had a really good thing, and Robin goes and sees him a lot, and uh, we appreciate that. He's been a part of this family for years and years, so hopefully uh, everything's going good with him, and they'll keep him in our prayers. Anyone else? Oh, Tommy. prayers for Kerry and, and his knee injury and getting better. Sounds like he's doing really well, which is nice. Uh, I've been fighting with my knee for about eight or nine months now, and, and he just don't heal as well anymore. I'm not sure why, but it just seems to be a little slower than it used to be. And so, yes, there's a lot of us out there, and, and uh, your, was it sister? Bro no, uh, T. Sister-in-law. Yeah. Having and, to, and to, to go with dentures yeah. and having to travel because medical um, facilities aren't aren't universal, and so you know some areas um, there's not as much as you found out. I found out today that or this weekend that, that Idaho is considered rural, or Idaho Falls, which surprised me. But I guess it is. I grew up in Orlando, so it makes sense to me. But there's you know there's a lot of opportunities that we don't have that the bigger cities have, and so. Sometimes you have to travel. So safe travel mercies with that and back and forth. Hope everything goes really well. Is there anyone else that has anything? Yes. Yeah, I, the neck still isn't 100%, and this morning I was putting my hair up, and I kinked my back, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So prayers for Pastor Ruth as she's struggling with David gone to, to do everything, and then on top of that, she hurt her neck, um, and she and I have reached the age where that could be by sneeze or cough <laughs> or sitting down wrong, um, so prayers for that as... Uh, Hopefully that'll get better. Um, you probably don't get, throw your back out very much when you're putting your bun up, do no, you? No, I, I don't. <laughs> but I have dropped pencils and gone, I could just go buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> but we ought to thank everybody, like Tommy said, for stepping up and, and being part of all of you for being here today. Um, let us pray. Thank you, God. You've heard our, our concerns and our joys. A lot of people won't share those because of just different circumstances, but that's okay. Everybody has their own. You know in our hearts what we really need and what we really want. We're celebrating this Mother's Day, um, very special to me in a lot of ways, and uh, very special to a lot of people. As Bev said there, you have mothers that have stepped up for all of us as we've grown up and, uh, and changed in life and, and been there. And... We thank you, God, for that gift because that's you sending people our way in our times of struggles. So we'd like to close this out with the Lord's Prayer. If you'll join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much, Gene. And I... Yep, turn it on. Otherwise, it's, it doesn't heat up fast enough. We got it. We got it. Nope, we're, 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 in, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, uh, Robin and, and Logan have been working uh, um, for weeks and weeks to make sure that we could hear things in the sanctuary without um, uh, squeals and echoes. This is a reading from the, from the Christian Epistles, Acts 17, verses 22 to 31. Athenians, as I have walked your streets, I have observed your strong and diverse religious ethos. You, you truly are a religious people. I have stopped again and again to examine carefully the religious statutes and inscriptions that fill your city. On one such altar, I read this inscription, to an unknown god. I am not here to tell you about the strange foreign deity, but about this one whom you already worship though without full knowledge. This is the God who made the universe in all its contents, the God who is the king of all heaven and all earth. It would be Ill illogical to assume that God of this magnitude could possibly contain any man-made structure, no matter how majestic. Nor would it be illogical to think that this God would need human beings to, provi to provide him with food and shelter. After all, he himself would have given to humans everything they need, life, breath, food, shelter, and so on. This God made us in all our diversity from one or original person, allowing each culture to have its own time to develop, giving each its own place to live and thrive in its distinct ways. His purpose in all this was that people of every culture and religion would search for this ultimate God, Grope for him in darkness, as it were, hoping to find him. Yet in truth, God is not far from any of us. For you know the same. We live in God, we move in God, we exist in God. And still another says we are indeed God's children. Since this is true, since we are indeed offspring of God's creative act, we shouldn't think of the deity as our own artifact. Sometimes something made our own hands made by our own hands. And if this great universal ultimate creator was simply a combination of elements like gold, silver, and stone, no, God has patiently tolerated this kind of ignorance in the past. But now God says it's time to rethink our lives and we reject these enlightened assumptions. God has fixed a day of accountability when the whole world will be justly evaluated by a new standard, new higher standard not by a statute, but by a living man. God selected this man. He made him credible to all, raising him from the dead. The word inspired by the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Kathy. So my friends, it is time for us to sing um, some favorites. Does anybody have a favorite that they'd like to sing? Um, oops, my other book is up there. Either hymnal is good. Um, you know that Camille can play any of them. Scott, thank you so much for coming up to help out with this. They got to help too, though. So everyone knows the rules. You have to know the song. Uh, it can be either hymnal and pick two verses. And, oh, Rob Farnham. Yes, sir. Twenty one fifty eight in the Faith We Sing book, verses one and two. Just a closer walk with thee. Keep me from all wrong. I'll be 
request as well, Scott. Is there a second request this morning? I guess they don't know any songs. If not, I'll Oop. have to pull out my old I, I think I saw one over here. Ruth Ann's got one. 191 maybe. If I can get somebody to get there so we can see it. Okay, what is it? I should have looked. Thank you, Nancy. 145. And did you say verses 1 and 2? Okay. The morning is broken. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated, my friends, um, so you will be more prepared to enjoy the beautiful music that Camille is about to play. We're going to take a moment to share um, the resources that God has provided to us with um, our community here at Trinity and with the greater world. And so um, I would like to remind you, be sure to drop that uh, prayer slip into the, into the offering plate as it comes around, um, even if it's just to get in the practice of dropping it in um, so that we have um, updated information. We know you were here, um, which helps us to know if we need to follow up or not. And last but not least, there's actually a little check box down at the bottom if you would like the pastor um, to give you a call or a visit because the pastor is not um, a mind reader and can't always know when that would be helpful. So um, I will turn it over to Camille. <laughs>
Thank you, Camille. It seems strange that um, these bits of paper, um, money, represent love and compassion and care, but they do. And so may God multiply the money, the love, the compassion, and the care. Amen. Nancy, are you ready to uh, give, bring the gospel lesson to us today? Then I would invite my friends to um, stand in body or spirit as Nancy brings us the good news from the gospel of John. Chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love, love me and obey the command I give you, I will ask the one who sent me to give you another paraclete, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth, who the world cannot accept since the world neither sees her nor recognizes her. But you can recognize the spirit because she remains with you and will be within you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am, your, I am in our loving God, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them loves me, and those who love me will be loved by our loving God. I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you so much, Nancy. I promised you that we would think about how we might know God, knowing God. Um, and part of knowing something is feeling comfortable. And so it is that um, let us ponder that feeling of being at home in God. Now, last week, we heard um, a passage from the Acts of the Apostles describing the stoning of Stephen. You might remember that there was a young man named Saul who held the coats of those who were committing that heinous crime. Today, we once again hear from the Acts of the Apostles about that man the one who became so important to the story of Christianity. We didn't skip past. Uh, today, I'm not going to skip past um, the reading from the apostles. We're going to deal with it straight on. Because once again, Saul will appear in the passage, but today, he has a new name. You see, Saul met the risen Christ and it changed his life. It changed his life so much that Saul was transformed into Paul. Today, we find Paul in Athens, sometime before the Greek Orthodox Christianity became the dominant religion there. As he wanders about the city, Paul finds evidence of religious devotion everywhere. Devotion to all kinds of different gods and all kinds of different faiths. He concludes that the people of Athens are a very religiously minded people. As if to confirm that, um, he is invited to meet with the Arapagus a council of the most respected and distinguished thinkers in the city. And to, um, and invited to explain to them what his religion and faith is all about. Paul begins 
by affirming. Excuse me. Paul begins by affirming um, the Athenians um, and thanking them for their keen interest in religion. He quotes approvingly from two of their most respected poets. And far from telling them that their religion um, is a bunch of rubbish, he links his message directly to things he has observed in their own religious practice. He had found a shrine in the city that was de dedicated to an unknown god. And so he begins by suggesting that the, the faith he is there to preach is not something strange and new, but rather it is the missing knowledge of a faith that is already within their experience. Now, that raises a question. Is this just a slick part, uh, a sl slick bit of marketing on Paul's part? Or is he really speaking with integrity about some deep truths concerning the nature of God? Well, although I think the advertising industry um, would have been proud of the angle that Paul took, I think we can conclude that he meant what he said. The quote he uses is from the Greek poet uh, Amenides. It is particularly instructive and one of my favorite pieces of scripture. In God, we live and move and have our being. In using that quote, Paul is saying that no one, regardless of what they might or might not believe, is entirely cut off from God. And they are not ever removed from the influence of God. To live, to move, to be. All is surrounded by God and underpinned by God. A person's ability to walk across the room is as dependent on God as it is dependent on the oxygen that they breathe. Indeed, Paul specifically says that although God wants to be sought out by us, God is not far from anyone and is indeed within the reach of everyone. This does, I think, track with what we heard Jesus say in the gospel reading last week when he made the rather exclusive sounding statement that the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because it neither sees nor knows the Spirit, but that the disciples can and do. It seems that both are saying that there is something confronting about the gospel made known in Christ. Something that demands a tough choice. Something that does not simply allow people to um, add a bit of Christian faith to their lives and leave everything else unchanged. The demands of Christian discipleship will not be domesticated to fit the world. Let me read that again. The demands of Christian discipleship will not be domesticated to fit the world. There comes a point in understanding when you are forced to choose one or the other. You can't have both. So in Paul's speech, we find what looks like a mix of affirmation of other people's faith and a challenge to go beyond it 
and find something more. Paul's speech is clearly asserting that there are people who do not know anything about Christ who are nevertheless reaching out for God and responding to God. And he also clearly implies that we cannot, so to speak, take Christ to them because Christ is already among them. In God, they live and move and have their being. This should come as no great surprise to us. We believe in a God who takes the initiative and comes to us while we are still set in our own ways and unwilling to change. We believe in a God who takes flesh among us. A God who embodied himself in places where he may not have been welcomed. We believe in a God who is present in ordinary things, in bread, in juice, in water. God reaching out to us and asking us to offer ourselves in return. So it should be no great surprise to us that this God, who is not far from anyone, is present among people of other faiths as well, reaching out to them in the ordinary things around them. And so we would be horribly out of line if we were to barge in and begin denouncing other faiths and asserting the claims of our own without listening and learning what Christ has been doing among them. To me, there seems no obvious reason why people who are genuinely seeking God might not discern enough of God's response in their lives to turn toward God and entrust their life to God. I don't think the Bible either tells us that or rules it out. But, I, but what I am sure of is that all of us, those who know the story of Christ and those who don't, will come closer to the truth and to understanding what God is calling us to as we listen to one another and allow one another's stories to be revealed to us that God's grace will be revealed to us and challenge us to offer ourselves more fully into the hands of God. Oh, we have much to learn and much to offer. For us, it begins here. Encountering the risen Christ in the word spoken and the bread broken. And as we do learn to recognize him in all places ever more strange and foreign, we come that much closer. Henry Nowen said that when we have met our Lord in the silent intimacy of our prayer, then we will also meet him in the camp, in the market, and in the town square. But when we have not met Christ in the center of our own hearts, we cannot expect to meet him in the busyness of our daily lives. So as we encounter Christ here, let us go out ready to acknowledge and celebrate 
the Christ, whoever, and in whoever we see him and encounter him. Let us go and call to others and share with them the offer of ourselves even more fully and consciously as we give our lives into the hands of God. Amen. Jesus gave himself to all people fully. And we are reminded of that in the story of, com of the breaking of those very first elements of what will come to be communion in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine. And at that table, Jesus shared a meal with all who were present, with those who would deny him, those who would betray him, those who would stand beside him. And so in remembrance of that table, the communion table at the United Methodist Church is always open to everyone, no matter your age, no matter your background. You are welcome because it's not my table or your table, it's God's table, and God would never turn any of the children away. We're going to share communion today by intinction. Um, so after I bless the elements, um, Vince and I will meet you down in front there. Um, so that I might offer you a piece of bread um, uh, in order for you to dip it into the cup, uh, and then you may partake. You're welcome to stop at the communion rails um, and uh, pray if you'd like, or re to return to your seat using that aisle over there. Um, if you happen to need gluten-free uh, crackers, um, you'll find them back there um, at that station where you're going to disinfect your hands before coming on up here. Um, so my friends, let us remember the Last Supper. There was one loaf broken, celebrating the one body of Christ, broken and given to the world. And Jesus said to them, Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the meal drew to a close, Jesus took up the cup, thanked God for the fruit of the vine within it, and said to the disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant. It has my whole life poured out, not a single drop withheld, Take this cup of salvation, for God's blessing is upon you. Do this as often as you drink. And so, in remembrance of the mighty acts, we eat, we drink, we share, and know God's love and God's desire to free us from the chains of sin Take a moment to speak with God about what is hurting your heart, what's holding you back, what has you chained in place. O oh, people of God, God, the one in whom you live and breathe and have your very being, desires that you would live free, know that you are forgiven. Amen. The table is set. 
I'd invite you to start there in the back and work your way up here so Vince and I can serve you. Thank you for sharing the cup of salvation with our friends today. My friends, um, it is time for us to sing once again. So um, I would invite you uh, to either turn in the faith we sing to 2027 um, or to follow along with the words up on the screen. Um, I think this tune will be f familiar to you as well.
may be seated. Um, Bev, I think you may have um, a letter to read to folks today. I'm going to put that there and just use that as our holder. Oh, I, I just changed the screen. And yeah, it's going to. Wow, that's teeny printing. You, you should have sent it to me, and I could have made it bigger for you. All right. But it's complex. Just remember it to is. hold the microphone. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Bev Kemp. I'm the chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. And I am up here to read a letter to you from our district superintendent. Dear members, can you all hear me? Dear members and friends of Trinity United Methodist Church, I am writing to share with you that Bishop Cedric Bridgeforth and the Greater Northwest Area Cabinet have long prayed about and worked on an interim appointment plan for your congregation. As a result, we have a one-year plan with the goal of discerning what God is calling United Methodists in Idaho Falls to do and be in the future. Beginning July 1st, 2023, the following leadership will be journeying with you in ministry. First, Reverend Kathy Neary, ordained elder from the Pacific Northwest Conference, will be with you on a part-time basis. Pastor Kathy is a trained and experienced interim minister who will lead you in worship the first two Sundays of each month, offer a weekly discipleship group, work with your leadership, and join you in the ministry of pastoral care for the year ahead. Second, Genesis Christian Mediation will also be with you to listen, teach, train, and discern. Andrew Arthur and Reverend Brian Scheimer's work alongside Pastor Kathy will make for a superb team. Genesis has a track record of success with an ever-growing number of sage congregations, and I am grateful to know that their gifted leadership will be put to use among you. Third, a different member of the Greater Northwest Area Cabinet will be with you each month to preach and offer additional training resources. This is unprecedented in the area. Because of your resources, your potential, and just you being you, the bishop has asked the cabinet to personally invest in you on a monthly basis. You can expect Bishop Cedric to be your preacher once in the coming year and you should expect to be richly blessed by his faith and wisdom. In order to have these three kinds of leadership available to you, all three will be shared with the St. Paul's United Methodist Church congregation. Your worship time will change, but you will continue having worship for your congregation in your building. Many details are yet to be determined. While this complex plan likely seems challenging, I am absolutely certain that you are in for an incredible year of learning, growth, and discernment. As of this reading, this news is only for your Trinity family of faith. This information is not public and should not be shared beyond the congregation until it is announced in an appointment express email from the bishop's office. This email will almost certainly be sent on Monday morning. Because this is a lot to take in, you're invited to a time of conversation immediately following worship and during our potluck. Leaders who met with me to discuss this plan will facilitate this conversation and help to clarify this news. Your SPRC members will convey to me your questions and concerns. To the pastor, Kathy, Andrew, Brian, and, and I can give them both our time and careful consideration. You have been praying for your next pastor. The cabinet has prayed dozens of times. I have prayed many hours for your church and this appointment. God has answered all of those prayers with a surprising plan that includes an abundance of extraordinary leaders. Don't stop now, though. Instead, please be in prayer for Andrew, Brian, Pastor Kathy, Bishop Cedric, the Greater Northwest Area Cabinet, the St. Paul's Congregation, and for your church family. Pray that the spirit moves in a mighty way and that we are all courageous enough to follow. Know that all of these leaders are also praying for you. May God's grace carry you in the weeks ahead as you thank Pastor Ruth for her wonderful care. 
her joy, her service over these past nine years. May the hope of the risen Christ lead you into the possibilities that await you. With the peace of Christ, Reverend Karen Hernandez. I and several of us will be back in the parlor, as will Reverend Ruth. We will answer questions we know the answers to. We will write down questions we don't, and we will go to Karen Hernandez to get those answers. So thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. I think there is one more person out there who is going to help us. Um, oh, looks like it's Richard. Thank you for coming to lead us in a call and response um, prayer of benediction. Go from this place, speaking of what God has done. We will remind everyone that despite everything, God loves us. Go from this place, singing of what God is doing. We will rejoice that God has not left us orphaned, but makes us one with everyone around us. Go from this place, imagining what God will do. We, we will witness, witness to all, all the hope, hope which seems so distant, yet is as close to us as our heartbeat. Amen. And I would invite you to stand in body or spirit as we sing the blessing song. bless the food that we are about to partake in, that it will make our bodies strong, that we may go out into the world to serve you. Amen. Amen.